In this video, we'll explore five more real stories of people who died in surprising and unusual ways. These are cases where simple actions led to unexpected and tragic outcomes. While the stories might seem strange, they remind us how unpredictable life can be and the importance of being careful, even in everyday situations. It was January 18, 1977, in Rome, Italy. Luciano Recheconi, a 28-year-old footballer known as the Blonde Angel, was in high spirits. Earlier that day, his doctor had confirmed that his recovery from a knee injury was progressing well and he would soon return to the field with Lazio. Recheconi was a key player in Lazio's 1974 Scudetto win, admired not only for his skill, but also for his work ethic and leadership. But that evening, his life would end in a tragic and senseless way. Luciano was born on December 1, 1948, in Nerviano, near Milan. His family wasn't wealthy, and Luciano had to work various jobs to help out. Despite the challenges, his passion for football was clear from a young age. By 1967, he had signed his first professional contract with Propatria, a Serie C club. He later moved to Foggia in Serie B, where he played a crucial role in the team's promotion to Serie A. In 1971, Luciano joined Lazio, a club about to experience one of its most successful periods. Under manager Tommaso Maestrelli, Lazio became known for its attacking style and strong team spirit. Luciano fit in perfectly, known as the wise one for his serious demeanor, especially around strangers. He was particularly close to teammate Gigi Martini, with whom he shared a deep bond. The 1973-1974 season was a turning point for Lazio. After a tough start, the team found its rhythm and climbed the Serie A table. Luciano was instrumental in this success, his partnership with Martini on the left side of the field proving nearly unbeatable. Together, they helped Lazio win their first Scudetto, a historic achievement for the club. However, the years that followed were difficult for Lazio. The team's performance declined, and in 1975, Maestrelli was diagnosed with cancer, deeply affecting the players, especially Luciano. Despite these challenges, Luciano remained a key player, known for his determination and leadership. On that January day in 1977, Luciano was out with friends Renzo Rossi and Pietro Guedin when they decided to stop by a jewellery store owned by Bruno Tabocchini. Luciano didn't know Tabocchini well. He was a friend of Pietro Fraticioli, who had invited Luciano and Guedin to join him. As they entered the shop, something terrible happened. According to the official account, Luciano, known for his seriousness, decided to play a prank by pretending to rob the store, saying, hands up, this is a robbery, while keeping his hand in his pocket as if he had a gun. However, this version of events has been questioned by many who knew Luciano. Those close to Luciano, including his son Stefano and his best friend Gigi Martini, have consistently disputed the idea that Luciano would play such a joke, especially on someone he barely knew and in front of children. Luciano was known as the wise one for a reason. He was not a prankster, especially in situations involving people he didn't know well. Moreover, none of the people in the store, including Tabocchini's wife and nine-year-old son, reported hearing Luciano make such a statement. It seems more likely that Tabocchini, already on edge after previous robbery attempts, panicked when he saw two strangers enter his shop. A year earlier, he had shot a robber during a burglary attempt and later fired shots at a man on a scooter, fearing another attack. By the time Luciano and his friends entered the shop, Tabocchini was understandably uneasy. He may have misinterpreted Luciano's actions as a threat and reached for his gun. Gadin, realizing what was happening, quickly raised his hands to show he was unarmed, but it was too late. Tabocchini fired, hitting Luciano. Luciano was rushed to the hospital, but he was pronounced dead on arrival. The news of his death shocked Italy, especially Lazio fans who idolized the blonde angel. For his teammates, the loss was devastating. Luciano had been a central figure in their success, both as a player and as a friend. Felice Polici, the team's goalkeeper, was the one who had to identify Luciano's body, a moment that would haunt him for the rest of his life. The investigation that followed was controversial. Tabocchini claimed self-defense, stating that Luciano had indeed said the infamous phrase and kept his hands in his pockets, as if he had a weapon. The court accepted this version of events and acquitted Tabocchini. However, many, including Luciano's family and friends, have never believed this account. The idea that Luciano, known for his wisdom and seriousness, would joke about something as serious as a robbery seems out of character. Moreover, there was no evidence that Luciano ever made such a statement, and no one in the shop heard him say it. Luciano's death left a void in the hearts of all who knew him, especially his wife and two-year-old son. To this day, 
His memory lives on among Lazio supporters. At every match, a massive flag with his face is waved in the Curva Nord, a reminder of the blonde angel who gave everything for his team. It was a humid evening on July 27, 2023, in Hong Kong's upscale mid-levels district. Remy Lucidi, a 30-year-old French daredevil known online as Remy Enigma, was preparing for another high-risk stunt. Lucidi had gained a following on social media by posting breathtaking yet dangerous photos from the tops of the world's tallest buildings. His latest challenge was to take place at the Tregunta Tower, a 721-foot residential skyscraper with panoramic city views. However, this time, Lucidi would not leave the building alive. Lucidi arrived at the Tregunta Tower around 6 p.m. and managed to slip past security by claiming he was visiting a friend on the 40th floor. Unaware of Lucidi's true intentions, the security guard allowed him inside. Once in, Lucidi headed straight to the higher floors. CCTV footage later showed him exiting the elevator on the 49th floor and heading for the staircase that led to the top of the tower. Along the way, he forced open a door providing access to the rooftop. Upon reaching the rooftop, Lucidi set up his camera to document what he likely believed would be another successful stunt. He had previously scaled some of the world's tallest structures, always capturing the dizzying heights in a single frame, but this time, something went terribly wrong. At some point during the stunt, Lucidi found himself trapped outside the building, 68 stories above the ground. Unable to find a way back inside, he frantically knocked on a penthouse window, hoping someone would help him. A maid inside saw Lucidi and immediately called the police. Unfortunately, before they could arrive, Lucidi lost his footing and fell to his death. His body was discovered on a patio below, alongside his sports camera, which police later retrieved. The camera contained videos of his previous stunts, showing his life as an extreme sports enthusiast who lived on the edge, both literally and figuratively. There was no self-harm note, and police quickly ruled out foul play. The investigation pointed to a tragic accident, one that occurred while Lucidi was trying to capture yet another thrilling moment for his social media followers. Lucidi had built a reputation for capturing stunning images from some of the world's most dangerous vantage points. His photos, from skyscrapers in Dubai to towers near Chernobyl, drew both admiration and concern from his followers. In March 2023, he posted a photo of himself dangling from the top of a tower near Chernobyl with the caption, My Comfort Zone. His followers were used to seeing him in such dangerous situations, but this time, the risk proved fatal. His last post, made just days before his death, showed a nighttime view of Hong Kong from above, tagged at Times Square in the Causeway Bay shopping district. Despite the dangers of his stunts, Lucidi seemed to be in good condition before the fatal incident. He had checked into a hostel in Hong Kong on July 17th, just 10 days before his death. The hostel owner, Gurjit Kaur, remembered Lucidi as a friendly and humble guest who kept to himself but seemed happy. He was healthy and fit and happy-faced, Kaur said in an interview. I feel very sad. Little did she know that Lucidi's next adventure would be his last. In the days following his death, Lucidi's fans and fellow urban explorers expressed their grief on social media. Many praised him for his fearless pursuit of adventure, while others pointed out the risks he took. R.I.P. brother. Sad news no one ever wants to hear about a fellow explorer, one user wrote on Instagram. Another commented, Bro went out doing what he loved. He lived his life fully. Not many can say that. Lucidi's death shocked the tight-knit community of urban explorers. Those who, like him, sought out the highest and most dangerous places to document their experiences. His passing also reignited debates over the safety and ethics of such pursuits. Although Lucidi often emphasized safety in his posts, the very nature of his activities meant that danger was always present. It was June 20th, 2023, in Washington, D.C., when 15-year-old Jay Thirunarayanapuram should have been at home working on his art project. Instead, he was atop a red-line metro train, chasing a thrill that would end his life. Jay, a talented and adventurous high school sophomore, was subway surfing, a dangerous trend promoted through social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram. As commuters passed through the Rhode Island Avenue metro station, Jay recorded himself, hoping to capture the attention of an online audience. Tragically, he lost his balance and fell beneath the speeding train, dying just days after his 15th birthday. Jay had a bright future ahead of him. His parents, Desikan Thirunarayanapuram and Vaishali Honawar, adopted him from an orphanage in India when he was six years old. They had always known him to be brave and curious, but recently, his behavior had become increasingly risky. He became interested in the online world of urban exploration and subway surfing. 
a dangerous influence his parents tried to prevent. They restricted his internet access at night and put him in therapy, but the lure of social media proved too powerful. Jay's Instagram was filled with photos and videos of his daring stunts, riding on trains, climbing towers, and exploring abandoned buildings. He had engaged with a community of urban explorers online, where risky behavior was normalized and celebrated. On June 20th, Jay left home without telling his parents where he was going. He headed to the Brooklyn station, climbed onto the roof of a red line train, and began subway surfing. He had done it before, and shared these stunts on social media to gain likes and comments, but this time, the adventure turned fatal. As the train approached the Rhode Island Avenue station, Jay lost his footing and fell under the wheels of the train. The video he was recording captured his final moments. Jay's parents received the devastating news from Metro Transit Police that same day. Their son had died while subway surfing, a trend they had repeatedly warned him about. Jay was more than just their son. He was a young artist, an animal lover, and a bright student at Albert Einstein High School. His death left them with a heartache that could never be healed. In the days following Jay's death, his parents were overwhelmed with grief and disbelief. They couldn't understand how social media had such a strong hold on their son, leading him to take such extreme risks. Vaishali Honawar expressed her disbelief, saying, He was so overconfident. He didn't think that he was just throwing it all away for this crazy adventure that he should have never been on. Jay's parents began speaking out, urging social media companies to take responsibility for the harmful content being promoted through their platforms. They pointed out how algorithms were designed to keep users, especially teenagers, engaged by pushing increasingly extreme content. Jay had become addicted to this cycle, chasing likes and validation from an online community that encouraged dangerous behavior. Congressman Jamie Raskin, who represented the family's district in Maryland, took notice of Jay's case. He reached out to social media companies, demanding they do more to remove and restrict content promoting dangerous activities like subway surfing. Meta, the parent company of Instagram, acknowledged the issue but admitted that it was difficult to consistently enforce their policies. TikTok also claimed that it would remove dangerous content as soon as it became aware of it. But in Jay's case, the damage had already been done. Jay's story is not unique. Subway surfing and urban exploration have become increasingly popular among teenagers, driven by the desire for social media fame. The trend of urban exploring, or hashtag urbex, has reached dangerous new heights with the rise of platforms like Instagram and TikTok. Jay Thirunarayanapuram's life was cut short because of this dangerous trend. His parents continue to fight for change, hoping their advocacy will prevent other families from experiencing the same tragedy. As the debate over social media's role in promoting dangerous behavior continues, one thing is clear. More must be done to protect young people from the darker side of the internet. It was a cold night in April 2014 in St. Petersburg, Russia. The city was quiet, with most people staying indoors. But for 17-year-old Xenia Ignatieva, the night had a special appeal. Xenia was an amateur photographer who loved capturing the world through her camera. Over time, her passion for photography grew, leading her to take more daring and dramatic shots. That night, Xenia planned to photograph a railway bridge in the Krasnogvardaisky district. The old, towering bridge seemed like the perfect spot for her next picture. She imagined the train tracks fading into the darkness, creating a striking image. Zania had recently bought a new camera with money from a summer job, eager to use it for this very moment. But what she didn't realize was that this decision would cost her life. Zania was used to heights. Like many thrill-seekers her age, she was part of a trend where young people climbed tall structures, rooftops, cranes, bridges, to take photos. The danger didn't scare her. It only made the experience more exciting. Her friend, Oksana Zhankova, also 17, joined her that night. While Oksana didn't share Zania's love for risky adventures, she supported her friend. As Zinnia started climbing the bridge, Oksana stayed at the bottom, watching with a mix of admiration and fear. When Zinnia reached the top, she was thrilled. She carefully positioned herself, trying to capture the perfect shot that would show not just the view, but also the thrill of being so high up. But as she moved to take the selfie, something went wrong. Whether it was the wind, a misstep, or the danger of her position, Zinnia lost her balance. She realized she was falling, and instinctively reached out to grab something to stop her fall. Her hand caught a cable, but it only made things worse. The cable was live, carrying 1,500 volts of electricity. As soon as Zania touched it, the electricity surged through her body. The shock was immediate and severe, causing her muscles to seize and her grip to loosen. She fell 30 feet to the concrete below. The impact was fatal, but the electric shock may have already caused severe damage before she hit the ground. Oksana, still at the bottom of the bridge, witnessed the entire incident. 
Seeing her friend fall left her in shock. She ran to Zania's side, but it was too late. When emergency services arrived, alerted by a call about kids on the bridge, they found Oksana frozen in grief. The police restricted the area, but there was nothing they could do. Zania was gone. The young photographer who had climbed the bridge to capture the perfect shot had paid the ultimate price. As the investigation unfolded, the tragic events of the night became clear. Zinnia's grandmother, Olga, was devastated. She described Zinnia as a lively and passionate young woman who was determined to take the most dramatic photos. According to Olga, Zinnia had chosen the bridge that night for its dramatic potential, hoping to combine the railway, the height, and the night sky into one perfect picture. But it ended in tragedy. The police noted that Zinnia might have been alive for a few moments after hitting the ground, but the electric shock likely caused her death. It was a heartbreaking reminder of how quickly things can go wrong when chasing a thrill. Zania's death made headlines across Russia and beyond. Her story became an example of the dangers of taking risky photos in dangerous locations. Experts like psychologist Martin Voigt pointed out that young people often take increasingly dangerous risks to capture the perfect shot. For Zania's family and friends, these explanations offered little comfort. A bright young life had been cut short in a matter of seconds. Zania's passion for photography once a source of joy had led to a tragic end.